Hi guys, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, very good, thank you very much. Uh, just about re emotionally recovering from your film, um, which left me in floods of tears. Um, so congratulations. <laughs> thank you. This is a really, really beautiful, uh, well-told story about male friendship and masculinity and its devastating effects. How do you begin to approach that when writing this script together? I think it's, you know, at the very beginning when we when we look for the themes and for the scenes and for the desires, I think one of the first realizations that we had was that for the longest time we have been focusing more on men fighting with each other than we have been on men holding on to one another. Um, and this idea of intimacy within the masculine universe is something that we really, I guess, first of all, desire to see. Because when we were looking at all these portraits of, of that fragile age, you know, the 400 blows, rat catcher, um, what else? L'Enfance Nu by Piala. Um, we saw, I mean, beautiful portraits and a lot of teams coming back. But one thing we missed, I suppose, was this intimacy between young men um, and and that I think was a first first original spark as we want to show this this friendship that we often get deprived of seeing um, and then also show I suppose what happens when as a society we murder the beautiful friendships between boys because we create this imagery that too often is brutal and 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 too often is about about deconnection mm -hmm. and where we're in the intimacy or or love within friendships is is considered weak or too feminine or too too gay or too queer and so on and so on it's not considered to be masculine um but it, but it is absolutely and you bring up um a lot of the the intimacy and the tactileness in the film and i feel like there is also a comment here about how we sexualize tactile behavior when inherently it's not hugging and touching and holding hands and inherently se sexualized behavior um and that's what we we sort of do in our society mm -hmm. yes yeah, we are conditioned. I think we are conditioned to look at closeness, especially between young men, mm. immediately through the lens of sexuality. We are so unused to seeing these images. We are so unused to seeing two boys laying in a bed close to one another if if they are not going to be about their sexualities. And I think that is a, a big confrontation also for me as both as a spectator, as as a maker is that we we have been deprived of those images although when we listen to boys although when we really truly listen to them at the age of 13 this is how this is what they will describe they need and um, we just we just have been not focusing on it Absolutely. So um, working together on this script and imbuing all these elements, how do you begin piecing it together? I'll start with that, you, Angelo. <laughs> uh, we, we talk. We, um, cause we, we, it's the second time we work together. It's the second time mm. we write together. But I think, I think we've only ever written together for like two and a half days. Most of what we do is we, we talk and we ask questions and we rephrase those questions and we rephrase our answers again and again and again. Um, and then we, we both go to our separate homes and we process what we've done. We write, we read again, we bring it back together and we talk again, we talk. Lucas talks a lot. I, I tend to ask questions I really do. while I make soup. Um, you listen to my stream of consciousness. Yes, I try to. Yeah, and then <laughs> I think the good thing with Angelo is like, when I'm like, I, I, when I come in it, I'm like, you know, I want to be on set as soon as I can. You know, I want to be with actors. That's where I feel like I can really do something, mean something. So what I want in that writing is I want it to go fast. That is, uh, that's how I come in it. And then Angelo is just this calm energy. I mean, not always, but no. most of the time. So he just, and he makes me look around, like not only forward, but also next and like, and I think he forces me in many ways to also take 
sidetracks. But, and often the, the more interesting questions, they, they are hidden on these sidetracks. Hmm. Um, and he's also, I mean, as I, I always he's also beautiful. He's also- I'm also beautiful. That's he's it. also that beautiful. The, you're the, you're yeah. a great cook. Okay. And <laughs> I love food. And so there's also this passion. And actually, I, it's really important because we, you know, what is difficult when writing is that it's, it takes so long for something to exist. Mm -hmm. And with food, it doesn't take that long for something creative to exist. Mm -hmm. And so it's this balance between the, the, the things that are immediate and the things that are not. Yep. And, and when, when Lucas eats, he's quiet. <laughs> Amazing. Usually, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, what part did you imbue any of your own experiences into this script as men and growing up as in that male environment? Definitely, definitely. Yes, there's, there's, there's a, I think a lot of stuff that while we were talking and eating and writing, that I also came to realize almost like, okay, I've, I've. I've, I, I was there and then that happened and then that happened, not literally, but a, a lot of the, the, the thought process that you feel within those, those boys and, and, and the school and the parents and everyone surrounding them and the, the society they grow up in is, is pretty tangible for me, I think for both of us, because we've, we've been there. Yeah, and, and I think maybe also, just as human beings, I think we will all recognize that fragile age when, when we are not cautious, mm -hmm. when we break because we don't know the impact of breaking, and, and where we want to belong to many rather than to one, mm -hmm. or rather than to ourselves even. And sometimes we betray parts of ourselves because of that. Because we're reckless. And, 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 and also, I think everyone who will see this film will recognize and will resonate with that idea of being pushed away. We, we have all been pushed away without really realizing or knowing why. Absolutely. And also getting pushed away from yourself. I feel like Leo gets pushed away from who he is because of the, the peer pressure around him. He hears one comment and then that's it. That's in his head. Mm -hmm. It, it, it only, I think in the beginning of the film is this, is this Garden of Eden where love doesn't have to have a name. And it only takes that one moment of consciousness to seep in and to become a part of the way of looking. That one tipping point. I think one of the most important scenes for me in this film is Remy laying in, in public, laying on, mm. the, trying to lay on, the, on the stomach of his friend and then his friend all of a sudden turning away because there's this consciousness that's, that, that became a part of their physicality. While before that, their physicality and their intimacy was just boundless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is something, I mean, that is not only male, that they also, I mean, I'm sure that is also felt by, by women or, or by people who don't, who don't identify as either of those, but um, it's, it's, it's definitely felt by young men. Yeah, and really well well conceived and, and portrayed. Um, and I think a lot of that's down to the brilliant acting as well from these two amazing boys. How do you begin casting this and how do you coax them through some of the more difficult scenes later in the film? So I think that, um, you know, this film, it, it's about that brink and about that very short moment between childhood and puberty so you need young people who are also really you know are going to be at that very precise moment so we went to a lot of schools in and around brussels and scouted actively you know went in the classes and looked went looking for young talents and we saw many great energetic energies um I think Aidan Dublin, who plays the, the lead, we found him in a very, very peculiar way because I was sitting next to him on a train. <laughs> so sometimes life gives you gifts if you can see them. I think, I mean, that counts for 
some people more than for others. But in this case, I think life threw us a gift, putting me next to this young angel in a train. And um, I, I spoke to him and I asked him if he would ever consider cinema or doing a casting for cinema, which he did, luckily. And then, um, you know, it was so much for us about chemistry with, with these boys because we knew that we needed two boys who would, you know, portray this friendship that was the, the, that is the core of the film, that is the most essential element of the film. And with Aiden and Gustav from the beginning, this war, there was this horizontality. Mm -hmm. You know, they were at eye level. They wanted not only themselves to do good, but also the other. And I think when we saw that, we felt the sensation that, that we would be able to do this all together. And then we rehearsed over the course of six months. Um, and a lot of things happened in these six months. But to summarize quickly, it's they read the script once at the very beginning, but never again. Because what I want to avoid is them studying a framework and not and their lines and their lines and not yeah. being creative or yeah. not being active. I want them to be collaborators rather than um, rather than puppets, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, and I also bring in a camera very early on in the process, like after the first month, because ideally what I want to arrive at is the camera being this organic thing that is a part of our togetherness. And that, that we arrive at this sort of transparency with it. That is, of course, now me being very fast and summary about it. There's other things that we work on, but... Pancakes. There's an awful lot of pancakes. <laughs> an awful lot of pancakes. I think it's about freedom, weirdly mm -hmm. enough, because you would think it's about, about shape. But I think it's about giving them also, making them feel like they have the freedom to, to propose things. Mm -hmm. And it's trusting them like you would trust anyone you want close to you for a serious amount of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Daddy, uh, it's all I have time for, but your amazing answers. And thank you for talking to me today. This film is truly incredible. And good luck with the rest of the run and the release. So Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.